Ah, yes. It's time to drop the W word here on the show. And it's not weather or world, but winter is almost upon us. The season we all know and love for being the chilliest, snowiest, and most festive of all is coming up in, coming up in, well, when does winter start anyway? Turns out it depends on who you ask. So we hit the streets and wanted to know, when do students at Penn State think winter starts? Personally, I think winter starts right after Thanksgiving. I feel like that's when the fall vibes kind of go away and that's when like the winter vibes come out because then Christmas music comes on. The actual the climate for winter starts by early December. Early December? Early December. Do you have like a day? Um, I don't think winter starts like around November 27th. Okay. I don't think it really gets that cold or such snow until middle of December nowadays. Like November. Yeah, like mid to end November. Okay. And why do you say that? It gets chilly. Yeah. And the leaves I, are done yeah. falling. Or when it starts to get like 30 degrees, I feel like that's winter to me. December 16th. December 16th. Why? Because that's when it usually gets cold enough here. Winter starts for me like in December. December 1st. If it's not too cold, then maybe December 15th. Our friend Natalie was onto something here. In fact, meteorological winter starts December 1st and lasts until March 1st. December, January, and February are the three climatologically coldest months of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. Keeping each season exactly three months long helps create consistent seasonal climate records over long periods of time, such as the observations we've been making at Penn State since 1893. This helps meteorologists find values like average seasonal precipitation, or temperature. But remember I said it depends on who you ask? What about the winter solstice or the winter equinox? The winter solstice isn't a meteorological phenomenon, but rather an astronomical one. So we went straight to Weatherworld's resonant astronomer to explain. A really important concept, I think, for understanding this is understanding the difference between the Earth-based perspective. You're on Earth, you look up at the sky, you see the sun, the moon, the stars, but astronomers were always thinking about the space-based perspective, right? The sun is here and earth is here and earth is going around the sun. So for astronomers, we're always thinking about how is earth oriented with respect to the sun. And so the way I define winter is earth is tilted. And at the moment in time when we are maximally tilted away from the sun, that's the moment of the winter solstice for us. Astronomically speaking, winter runs from the winter solstice in December until the spring equinox, which is in March. As the Earth continues its path around the sun, you hit the moment where now we're not, we're neither tilted towards nor away from the sun. And so on that day, the sun will appear higher in the sky, will have roughly um, 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime, and that's the spring equinox. Hours of daylight decrease each day throughout the fall, and we have the least daylight on the winter solstice. After that, through January and February, we are gradually gaining hours of daylight back until the summer solstice. So on the winter solstice in, in um, Eastern time, sunset can be as early as about 4.30 p.m., right? So, so the days seem really short, but the, at least for me, like I know some people feel un they, they're not huge fans of winter, but I actually see winter as when the duration of winter is the sun getting higher and higher in the sky. And so our sunsets getting later and later. A common myth is that the winter solstice always takes place on December 21st. But Palma says this isn't correct all of the time. To an astronomer, we don't necessarily think about the days on our calendar. We just picture the Earth going around the sun, and the Earth has to come back to exactly the same point in its orbit for that moment in time to happen. And it turns out it's not an, an exact number of days, right? If it was exactly 365 days, it would always be the 21st. But it just so happens that the Earth's orbit around the sun takes a little bit longer than 365 days, so each year, the time of the solstice drifts a little bit. And if we didn't do anything to our calendar, it would keep drifting to the point where at some point in the future, the winter solstice would happen by 
in June by our calendar, but we don't want that to happen. So we introduced the idea of a leap day, right? So if you ever wonder why do we do leap days every four years, it's actually to reset our calendar so that the winter solstice is occurring around the 21st again. So it starts to creep the 21st, the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd. Then we introduce a leap day and it resets it. While astronomical winter and meteorological winter may not be defined the same, the concepts are still closely connected. It gets cold in the winter in the northern hemisphere because of Earth's tilt. And so from a meteorological perspective, one way you can think about that is the reason why it's warmer in summer and colder in winter is the height of the sun influences the number of hours of daylight, but it also influences like how much energy is the earth receiving, right? So we just receive less energy and sunlight in winter. So it turns out when winter starts isn't such a straightforward question after all. It depends who in the scientific community you ask. But winter is more than just a season. For many, it's a feeling deep down with as many different personal definitions as there are snowflakes. For Weather World, I'm Tyler Hughes.